Well, many years back, Sue Rude Cox was our director of children's education here at this church. She had the idea that this church would benefit the community by having a child care center. I believe she'd been contacted by Memorial Hospital that they would have lots of children who would be able to attend if we created one. And there were a lot of new families moving into the neighborhood. They needed child care. We had an empty building all week long, and it seemed like our empty building and the need for child care could be fulfilled as a mission for this church. So he had to approve it. So we came before them, we said, we want to do this. And we have complaints from the neighbors next door. They don't want a daycare center next to their house. So uh, we had to go before the council. So the, the council said, okay, we'll give you one year to test it out and see how it goes. Then after a year had lapsed, there were no complaints. And they said, it's a go. The question arose, would we be a thoroughly secular daycare center? or would it be, really be a church-sponsored, church-oriented daycare center? And some advocated we should be totally non-sectarian and don't say anything about God or Jesus or anything like that. So nobody feels offended by coming here. And most of us, including myself, felt no. We want the freedom to be able to say a prayer with our little kids. Sing, thank him, thank him, all you little children, God is good. But if we'd made that a non-sectarian kind of thing, we couldn't have done any of that. It, I, I really embarrassed to list anybody because there were so many, but there were several that come to mind. Florence Koenig, Dorothy DeSaro, Caroline Sloan, Glenn Sylvester. And the committee members, as I recall, Joe Bodle. And she's still alive, praise the Lord. But uh, also I remember Frank Gillette and five or six others. I cannot remember who else was on that committee. We were hoping that there would be a uh, influx of young people coming into our church and that they would uh, eventually be incorporated into our morning worship service. After returning to First United Methodist Church, after a 35 year absence, it was great to see that there was a preschool and that the seed that I had planted was nurtured so well by this church and is active now in ministering to children in our neighborhood. Spaghetti feed, which brought a lot of the church congregation together, making spaghetti sauce, making spaghetti noodles, garlic bread, brownies, it was a, and a green salad. It was a lot of hard, hot work, but it was really community building between those who were involved with the preschool, parents, and our congregation. The best times for being a preschool director are uh, when I get to play with the kids, you know, <laughs> every day. Um, but also when I see them make these giant developmental leaps you know there's nothing like that witnessing these uh, great advances where there's no turning back uh, debbie and i when when debbie house and i were uh, teaching together we really wanted them to go to um, vacation bible school and uh, one year they did, they were able to join. We had to get parents permission and, and they all said yes. And then it was kind of overwhelming for the um, school, for the uh, church. So we decided to have our own and that was fun. We created a little Bible school and we did that. And uh, my granddaughters always participated. They love to read the stories and be in the little plays that you have. And so uh, that, those were really good memories and lots of fun because it was something different. And uh... a little bit strange, we didn't get to come in and sit with him or visit with him on his first real day. But when I, um, when my husband and I dropped him off, he did not look back. He ran right in and <laughs> got right going to play. And um, as far as I know, he was never upset about going. He just loved it right away. Love the kids, love the teachers, and he was really ready. It was such a relief to us that um, he was so happy there. There's like 
precious things from the preschool that I don't want to take down, you know, like this picture of Louie with a bunch of apples stacked on his head or like him, the wintertime Louie, where he's like sort of in a snow globe and uh, yeah, just really adorable stuff. I remember Diane telling me that one morning he came into the preschool and he said, I love it here. Well, I found FUMC preschool because my husband, my husband and I bought a house in the neighborhood. And um, so we saw that it was close. And actually my uncle had sent his kids there maybe 15 years earlier and they loved it. Friendships that were made at FUMC preschool have been, I think, precious memories for sure. And uh, as a parent, I really enjoyed the ice cream social and getting to see the classroom because it's, you know, during COVID it's been difficult to see what goes on behind the gate. I mean, I've learned how much, I already knew it, how much the board and the teachers care about the kids and about um, and teaching them and taking care of them. So that's been really awesome to see that. Uh, I learned that it takes a lot. Yeah, I hadn't thought of the preschool in the way that the church thinks of it before mm -hmm. joining the board as a ministry, mm. as a service to the community. Yes, you know, yes. I thought of it, it as is. like, this is where my kid's going so that mm -hmm. he can learn and I can have a break and <laughs> <laughs> True. anything else I'd like to add is that I am learning every day um, the effect FUMC has had on our community when I'm at work at the ice arena I learn of people who are FUMC preschool graduates oh. and how much they loved it when I go to the local park I run into people who have graduated from FUMC preschool and have loved it. When I take my five-year-old to kindergarten, I see other families that have had such a beautiful experience at the preschool. So um, it's just been a big part of our community. It's very gratifying when I run into alumni families uh -huh. out in the community uh -huh. you know, because they remember us and they ask about us and they remember the times of picking up their kids and seeing them play with their friends and some of them keep in touch with their friends all throughout high school and beyond uh, that they met here in preschool they're learning how to develop friendships teachers and especially when they they uh, rally around and they they take care of the kids and keep them engaged and they work hard together. And if there are issues that come up, they're working, working together. We're just really, really fortunate to have this staff. We have an excellent staff. And uh, like I said, uh, three teachers that I work with are still there after all these years. And Diane's found new teachers, you know, and, and she's done an excellent job. And we have a, a great staff. But one of the things I appreciated so much about the FUMC teachers is, you know, they always had expectations for Louis that he was able to rise to meet. The church members have supported it all along. You know, they trim the bushes. Um, they serve on our board. We've had 40 different church members serving on our preschool board over the years. Well, you know, it's a real treasure to me. It's, uh, it's very close to my heart. I would hope that the church members in this 30th anniversary would, would feel good about the program. It's been a great ministry in the community. And I see that when I get to meet the alumni families and they come up with all sorts of ideas and, and then come and, and uh, join us for the silent auction for some friendly bidding. Now, I love my teachers and, and my friends. My favorite thing about preschool is the friends I made.